What up, sarcasm and motherfucking orgasm fans? It's your boy Julius from the Toxic Tangents podcast. Check out episode 30 called R.I.P. Kevin Samuels, where we pay homage to the Godfather. You're listening to Sarcasm and Motherfucking Orgasms with your host, Will Day Fresh. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Sarcasm and Motherfucking Orgasms. I am your host, Will, and I want to thank you for listening and tuning in to another episode. Now, on today's episode, I have another person of the podcast universe. I have my man, Julius, from Toxic Tangents. What's going on, brother? Yeah, you know, just living life. (laughs) Loving it. (laughs) I hear that you gotta live it best way you can um so i want to say thanks for joining me brother when i reached out i really do appreciate it no thank you for having me on your show definitely um and when i was on your show i had really really good fun it was just nice to sit down and talk with you you know we went through you know some of the toxic things that we do but (laughs) i still enjoyed it i really did yeah, that was that was. I'm not gonna lie, we went all over the place with it, but uh, that's exactly what the show is. <laughs> mm-hmm, definitely, definitely. Now I know about you, but why don't you go ahead and you know spend a little bit and tell people about you and Toxic Tangents. Uh, so, like you said, my name is Julius, uh, and that's my show, Toxic Tangents. Just started the show. Um, I don't know, several months ago, maybe six, seven months ago, but. Uh, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. podcasting out uh, over here in the, the Mile High City. So, you know, where we is legal and other stuff. You feel me? Uh, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's wild that they legalize that stuff, too. It is. And it's um, kind of interesting that you said it because I had an interview with a girl who is also in uh, Denver, as well as you. She runs uh, the podcast called... And this is her name, Getting Naked with Gaia. So she runs it like every Saturday um, for her podcast when she reports. So I was telling her that I hooked up with you and maybe y'all two can link up. So you might want to be on the lookout for her podcast. Shout out to Gaia, by the way. And also people make sure to go check out her podcast, Getting Naked with Gaia. She got some really cool stuff. She's a real cool down to earth chick. And of course, she's in Colorado. So she smokes one every day. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> what's funny about that i don't i don't smoke at all really okay yeah it's just like, even though there's a dispensary right across the street from my house but eh, it's not for me <laughs> yeah i mean there's tons of dispensaries here in detroit alone like mm-hmm. there's one on i won't say every corner but you'll find them you'll find them around they got big ass big boards i mean billboards like house of dank or get your dank roll to you in a smoke or something like that i don't know <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just weird how things are going but um so let's start off like this so let's go over like a forgive or a fuck it what's something that's going on today in your world that you're going to say oh i'll forgive it or i just say fuck it Oof, i would say uh so recently i visited some people um in a different state just in case they listen to it, I'll be a little vague, but I don't know. I, it's it's one of those things I'm saying, fuck it, because I planned out the trip. It was lit, um, or at least I thought it was going to be, and then I get out there, and they're kind of just on their own thing. Like, you ever visited friends somewhere else, and then they, they like doing everyday life for them, like going to work and shit. Mm-hmm. So you're yeah. just kind of there. Yeah, just so, chilling, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I thought I planned this out, you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, I would have made different moves. Um, so yeah, it was, it was kind of a shitty feeling, but at the same time, I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to turn up. You know what I'm saying? Man. Yep. Yep. Still living life as best you can. I never could understand that. If a person tell you, oh, you should come visit me. Like you said, you get everything planned, you go and visit, and then they still doing everything in life. Like, why did you even bother inviting me? Make the time, right. especially if you come like on a weekend or even like a couple of days before the weekend starts and you're still trying to do that. Oh, I'll be responsible. No, ho, call off. Let's go out. Let's live a little bit. Come on now. Yeah. Meet me halfway. Exactly. Fuck your job. <laughs> 
Now, come on now. We still need to have a job because we all got bills. So, come on. You got to be a little respectful to the grind. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And I, well, the thing is, they didn't invite me, but I still, like, called them up because I wanted to go out there. So, this is, like, mm-hmm. months in advance. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm like, okay, I still planned it out. Like, let me, you know, just let me know. What's up? Do you feel me? Like, if they mm-hmm. would have said, honestly... I'm probably going to be on regular life shit, but you can still come up and I might pop out and say, hey, I I would know what it is. You see you see where I'm going with that? Yeah, I got that. I can remember when I was in Nashville and I knew a couple people there. I'm like, well, I'm going to be here for three months, so we should hang out. They're like, okay, cool. We'll, I'm still doing my thing. I said, no problem. So like, it was like my schedule. I was working like mid-shift, like 11 to about 7, 30, 8 o'clock. So I still had a couple hours just to enjoy life. Man, that whole three months, do you not know? I did not see not one of them Negroes, not once. And then right. when I finally get back home here to Detroit and I start posting, they'd be like, oh, well, you should have came through. We should have hung out. I'm like, what the fuck? I reached out dozens of times trying to hang out with you. Not once you say, oh, let's do it. Not even go out for a drink. And then come to find out, because where I was in in Nashville, it's like kind of downtown. I was staying in the heart. These Negroes lived a couple blocks away from me, and I didn't even know it. Wow, that's some, I mean, are they, are they <laughs> friends? Quote, unquote, yes, friends? Not anymore. I don't talk to them niggas no more, because, like, how are you going to do me like that? Especially when I gave you heads up to say, oh, I'm going to be in town for work for less than 90 days. So let's just, like, get dinner or get drinks. And, like, you ain't, you ain't working weekends. So just come through. Let me know what's going on. Nope, that one time. But nah, I don't talk to them no more. Like, I don't follow them. They have followed me. But it's all right. You find out who your real friends are. Oh, a thousand percent. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would say I definitely agree with you on that fucking moment. Like, you try to show up, be the best person you can, and still want to hang out and then flake on you. Nah, I ain't about that. I'm really not. I know way too many flakes, and the only time I ever indulge in it where I put milk in it and eat my Frosted Flakes, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like that one. <laughs> well, uh, you know, you know, here on Sarcasm Orgasm, we drop gems that people never pay attention to, so. <laughs> but um, do you got, like, a forgiving moment? Forgiving moment. Oof. Yeah, you look like a real fucking type of person, so. <laughs> nah, see, I, I do I do really believe that I'm a forgiving person because, I'll see, the thing is, I'll forget about mm-hmm. whatever they did for the most part. Oof. I don't, I don't really think I get wronged by a lot of people. Okay, here, here's one. Here's one. Um, I forgave this guy that uh, it was back in college and... He had a party at his house and uh, I lost my phone over there. Mm -hmm. Right. And okay, cool. I went back the next morning, you know, knocked on his door like, yo, I I think I left my phone over here. Well, no, I definitely know I left my phone over there. And then, uh, of course, it's not over there. I I know one of his friends stole it. So, of course, he's acting like, oh, shoot. uh, they, you must have lost it somewhere else in the back of my mind. I'm like, dude, I know your people stole it. You know, <laughs> but at this point, I'm like, I mean, yeah, like at this point, that was years ago. You know, I got I got way more money than I did. Then you know, shit shit is looking is looking nice these days. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, that's that's just water under the bridge. You know, they could have that little win. You know what I'm saying? I, I hope they ate. I hope they sold it and it paid their rent or something. Because you know what I'm saying. Like that's that's a little bullshit phone. Keep keep take your little win. <laughs> yeah. Now was it an Android or an Apple phone? No, it was an Android. I think it was one of those old Motorola's or something. Oh man, you pick those shits up anywhere. You go to Goodwill, get a box of them for like five dollars. <laughs> well, that's not. That's now, but I think back then it was like 2013 or something, and it was the latest wow. phone out or whatever. So. I mean, I, I, look, like I said, I hope they got a few hundred dollars paid paid mm-hmm. some rent, you know, for doing some bitch ass shit like that. But yeah, that, that's some straight nigga shit right there, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I used to take phones too when I was, you know, and then I grew up. So, you know, it, it's just one of those things. Charge it to the game. Yeah. Man. Oh, okay. You got to throw that word out just to make sure, you know, because they might be listening. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
fun. I I don't think I can remember where I had. I have a lot of fucking moments. Um, just everything that's happened up until this point. But as far as forgive it, I don't know because I yes, I am a very forgiving person, but I'm also a person that's like I just don't care. I, I really don't. And I've always used to tell you, like, if it's not involving me, then I don't want to know. I don't want to make it my business because then I have to get in line with the level of bullshit that you're bringing towards me. So it's like you're involving me in ways that I just don't want to know about. So I always tell people, if it don't involve Will, Will don't want to know. (laughs) He really don't. So I always try to keep it just like that. But still, you got people who want to be like, oh, well, don't you want to know? No, bro, I don't. I don't. Right. Like, me and my brother, we just have this thing. It's like, we say, just leave me alone. I, I don't care. Just leave me alone. Yeah, I don't want to be bothered by it. So I, I feel you on that. I really do. Um, But I want to go um go back a little bit further and ask you just like about your podcast. Like, how, how did you come up with Toxic Wait. Tangents? And then how did you start to where you are now? Like, where was the transition from? Uh, let me see. I came up with the show <laughs> because for a long time, you know, I was listening to podcasts and stuff. And, you know, the more I, I was listening to podcasts, I'm like, dang, I really wish I was in that room talking to them. Or I really mm-hmm. wish I had my own platform to, you know, to go off on tangents. Yep. But, uh, I wasn't I wasn't thinking tangents back then but I, at the time I knew I wanted to start one I just didn't know what the name was going to be and you know different names were coming across my head so I'm like you know typing them into Spotify let me see is it taken oh dang okay 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 that's taken that's taken that's taken and then eventually I don't I don't even know just randomly it kind of came to me I was like ah toxic tangents so <laughs> I looked it up and yeah, every everything kind of checked out for the most part. So yeah, mm-hmm. all the social media handles were free. I'm like, all right, let me lock this down now. Yeah, so, you know, okay. before somebody else takes my idea. <laughs> right, because because you got to come up with a name that's unique, right? There's so many shows out there. It's, it's best mm-hmm. if, you, if yours is unique. Um, but at the same time I see a lot of shows and I'm like they do have the same name but they might be about two different things so yeah yeah cause um, when you say that cause when we had did our episode I looked it up I'm like it was toxic something but I couldn't remember what it was and then when I put it in I was looking I'm like wait a minute that don't look like Julius this like this brother's light skin so I started searching again and then I found <laughs> it because I had to remember it was toxic something it was like we were on a tangent or something and then I put like toxic TA then it came up I'm like yep there it goes so I was able to find it <laughs> but yeah um that's how I felt about mine when I came up with sarcasm and orgasms I had to put sarcasm in and there was just like a shit ton of podcasts with sarcasm just a shit ton and then after i put the and symbol there was none so i'm like okay sweet i got locked this in but then as far as the social media handles man that was hard because some of them like my twitter um and my instagram they got a one in them so i can't just have the name itself i have to put a number or a special character so but even if you type it in it'll still come up as me because you'll see uh, my logo but yeah those trying to get a handle on being the first one it is kind of difficult it is like even on my facebook one i can't put sarcasm and orgasm because of the name itself it goes against uh the policy which is stupid very stupid so i had to create something else so um, when you're like really doing a podcast and trying to do all the handles and everything, it's kind of difficult because you got to come up with names that people just don't think of or is going to resonate with a podcast. Right. You definitely, you definitely got to stand out. Mm-hmm. And so with yours, with you being on Talk Tangents, what's been like some of your, your growth that you've gone through in the last six months? Uh, I would say just basic things as a speaker. Um, to mm-hmm. me, that might be the most important thing uh, as far as being a host. And obviously, I'm still improving with that. But, you know, just watching which words not to say 
uh, watching, you know, filler words, stuttering, right? Because when you listen back to your episodes, especially maybe the first one, I know definitely <laughs> for me, the first one was, oof. There was a lot of editing that went into that first episode. I'll say that. <laughs> uh, man, bro, there was no editing of mine. I just went ahead and recorded and straight put it out. And then it's almost like I want to go back and redo it. But it was just so natural that it was so natural. And even if I read back and did it, I would remember half the stuff that I said. Because that was, what, six months ago. So it's up there. Like I say, my first episode was Stupid People. And Stupid People was just my very first episode. And it's been my best two dates. Not that I'm throwing numbers out there or anything. But just the, uh, the quality and the perception that I've got. It's been a great time with that. So I always tell people, if you want an intro into Sarcasm Orgasm, listen to the very first one. Because the story that I give when I was at work, I saw this lady... And she um, she was ordering something ahead of me. And then I was like, oh, you got potatoes back there. When I really meant french fries. <clears throat> and he was like, yeah. And the lady goes, well, I want those too. He was like, well, ma'am, you should have asked. She was like, well, I didn't know. And I'm thinking, you should have asked because it says up there, ask by choice. So you got a choice. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I feel you on that. I didn't edit none of them. And I didn't even learn how to edit none of my uh, my episodes until, I don't know, my 15th end when I started knowing that I could put, you know, nice little transitions and cues and all that in. So it's it's been growth for me as well. Damn, you must be yeah, you must be good on the first take then. See, that's that's something that I'm trying to get right. <laughs> it just nah, I don't think it's that. I just try. Just and then when my brother did a playback for me, um, he listened to it, he was like, Well, you're talking, but then you're losing breath. And then it's like it's almost like we hear your brain, but you're stopping and trying to catch up. So he told me just to like I said before on yours, like I have a script. Like everything that I do, I have scripts with it or have little notes just to keep me on track. So I think that's been my growth is just learning to stay on track while not staying on track, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, no, it, it definitely. Right. Because you want it. You want the conversation to be natural. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like very that, pure. You have a subject for the episode, too. Mm hmm. Now, it's different. You know, when we're having like an interview, then we just like talk about things. But when you're just doing well, when I'm doing just my episodes themselves, I have things written down automatically that I've already written and I've read it again out loud. And then I'll think of ad libs in between it. So I'll cut it out or scribble it or whatever so and then i also like doing it on non non line paper because i can make the space bigger so i can edit it right right above it and i'm just talking too much about that <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> with you working on toxic tangents so far what has been like a really good episode that you like to tell people to check out when you first tell them about your podcast let me see. Like, uh, yeah. I'm like, all of them. No. Uh, <laughs> let me see. A really good one. Um, there was one called R.I.P. Kevin Samuels. And oh, um, man. that's episode 30. And I think that was good because the person I interviewed on there, she was just, the things that she was saying that she did in her relationship were kind of wild. I'm like, wait, you don't think that's toxic? Like she was basically stalking, stalking her man and things like that. I'm like, you know, that's not normal. She's like, yes, it is. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, just wild, wild shit like that. Uh, <laughs> there's another one called uh, Black Privilege. And that might be the quintessential show in my eyes um, <clears throat> from my show. And that's because we do go all over the place. Mm-hmm. And there is a lot of, you know, just bros talking shit. But at the same time, we get into some like deep conversations about real shit and history and stuff like that. I'm like, I couldn't ask for more. You know, if every episode could be like this, you know, that, that would be great. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, I believe I have a couple of myself like uh, high bow, uh, free dumb check engine light. Uh, ooh. 
I think those couple, because especially when I came up with Freedom, I did it during February, like Black History Month. And there's this one joke that Eddie Griffin has done that I love to date. He was like, if you want something for free, you must be dumb. That's why they call it free dumb. So we're always want something for free, but we're thinking that we can get it no matter what. But we're just so dumbfounded that nothing in this world is free. Not even air. We have to even have to pay for that. Prime example, bag of chips. That you pay for that air right there. Like I was in the grocery store yesterday with my mom and she was like, Wow, a bag of chips is dollar fifty nine. Half of it is air. Just <laughs> uh, yeah, or three quarters of it. So yeah, we're we're real dumb for thinking we're gonna get something free. We really are. <laughs> wow, that's deep. Yeah, I yeah. Some people are deep, others are not. They're just, you know, shallow. Mm. Like the pools that they, you know, try to get into. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, like, what type of uh, when you have your guests on, um, how how are you able to like find them? Like, where are you going to get your guests to come on and talk about toxic tangents? Um really all over the place my first guests are just people that i know personally Mm -hmm. and actually even after that it's still people that i know personally but then um also let me see the internet so clubhouse um on instagram maybe it's not a clubhouse yeah are you on clubhouse Nah, bro, I'm not. I knew, I know a clubhouse, this but I didn't know that could be a platform to find a uh, unique with your voice. host. Will yeah, there's there's Dave different Fresh. rooms in there that are just for that networking and stuff. Um, these uh these one people they have, I think like every Thursday they have like a matchmaking thing, so you could find a guest and be a guest type thing. Matchmaking. So yeah, like club, like podcast. They call it podcast speed dating. <laughs> it's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, no, no. It's, it's cool though. It's cool though. Um, I think I locked down a guest from that before too. Um, so that Instagram, because um, yep. you you could even follow like certain hashtags, like podcasts, this type of podcast, that type of podcast hashtags, mm-hmm. and um, you know, you just come across somebody's page, check their stuff out. Oh shoot, they look like they'd be kind of cool. Um, that or you know how you just. It'll recommend like whatever you listen to shows on. It'll recommend shows, and so you just yep. click listen to it, and you're like, "Hey, I think we could be a cool collab." You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's actually how I found you. I'm like, "Oh shit, this shit is kind of oh, funny." Sweet, sweet. I appreciate that. Okay, let me ask you this. So, when it comes to you actually like making making these connects with other people, and you set up a time and interview, and they don't show up, like. Does that bother you? And if you do, do you do the parameters to where, okay, I'm going to charge you such and such for just locking down this? Because I had a lot of people over these last couple of weeks, they'll hit me on my calendarly, they'll make it, but then they don't show up. Like, they'll give me all the info I need, and then they just give me some bullshit that's like, oh, yeah, I didn't make it or such and such. Like, do you charge people for um, just setting up an interview? No, but I should. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh God, I, I've done one collab with this with this lady named Genesis, and um, that's how she does it with her Calendly. Okay, and, all right. Yeah, you I gotta put this payment me. stuff in there, and if you don't mm-hmm. show up, she's gonna charge your ass. And yep. I don't, I don't blame her because it's like, yo, don't don't have me block off this amount of time, right? Like I have other shit to do. Don't uh-huh, have me yes. block off time. Right. And then I'm, you know, I'm ready to go. I got all my stuff set up. And then just for you to not show, I'm like, you bitch ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's it. No, that shit is disrespectful. But it I don't truly even, is. Right. And I, I don't, I don't think people try to disrespect, but it, it is, you know. Uh, but I would say in general, most, most of the people I schedule stuff with, they don't, they don't cancel. Um, uh, I'll say maybe like 80% don't cancel, but. Well, you got higher numbers than me because over the last couple of weeks, I think between a 14 day period, I booked at least like eight people and only three of them showed up. Oh man, that sucks. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's not like I did it. 
and it's not like I did it back to back to back. It was when, you know, I didn't have to work and I'm doing my this. So I book them and we be fine. I talk to them and I tell everybody, like I told you, hey, I'm hit you up 10, 15 minutes beforehand. You know, we make sure that we good. Everything's working. Don't hear a word. They just straight go ghost. So I just don't appreciate that. And I... I think I seen it. I think it was on one Facebook group. I saw it's like a dude was like, if you going to interview with me, I'm going to charge you a booking fee, but it's going to be refundable. Like if you show up, I'll send you the money right back. No problem. But it's like, people are not taking some of the things serious. Like we're actually sitting here trying to network, have conversations, make great content, but people be bullshit. And I just don't like that. And it's happened to me to where I'm like, okay, I'm sick of this. I really am. So yeah. I, when I made another post, I said, I even said, I said, well, if you're going to book, send five dollars to my cash app. Never heard nothing from her. Ah. Not a damn thing. I'm sorry. It's just that's how it's going to be because I'm, in a sense, trying to take this serious. But then again, like time is money. I'm not doing this for free. Well, in a sense, I am. But still, I'm trying to get to a point to where. You know, it's better for me, but people just be on Bro. bullshit all the time, all the time. And then it's like, I want to give them the middle finger, but I can't because they won't see it. So can I be honest? Yeah. Um, and this might be, this is going to sound toxic, but I found that when I book with women that I have to make sure I do a little bit more like you know, just hit them up a little bit more in advance. You know what I'm saying? Cause, and I'm not, I'm not, um, saying that it's cool to like hit somebody up before the, you know, the podcast interview, like last second be like, yo, here's uh -huh. a link. Cause I, I might've done that with you and my bad for that, but I was still ready to show up on time and you did too. Um, which I appreciate, but I'm not gonna lie. If you do things last minute, as in like send a confirmation thing last minute, women guess, it seems like they they're usually like oh no sorry I could, you know what i'm saying because of how women are right uh -huh. it's yeah like, I you gotta you, make sure you hit them up that same morning or even maybe the day before and that same morning like all right just confirming just confirming i'm like how many times do i gotta confirm you book the shit right <laughs> like don't put like you know what i'm saying if you book the shit show up you know what i'm saying you're right. You're right about that. And I can't I can't go against that. Like I even have thought about, well, let me message them or let me email them and see what's going on. Um, and I just forget to do it because my brain is running in 20 different ways. So, yeah, I need to, I need yeah, to I need to get better with that because mm -hmm. I'm still like, yeah, I got I got an interview at, you know, five or whatever time. So I'm, I'm still ready to go. But I'm like, oh, yeah, let me make sure I send that confirmation. Right. Especially if it's mm -hmm. one. It's hey, it's a it's it's because it's a lack of accountability for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it is. And I'd be thinking to myself, I just need to hire assistant, but I can barely afford myself. So what makes it sense of me trying to get somebody else? <laughs> that would be nice. I can't wait till <laughs> hey, we'll we'll both get there with our shows. Where we like, yo, my assistant handles all this shit. They're gonna book you. They're even gonna reach out to you, and they're just gonna say, hey, be ready at this time. True. I, you know what, speaking of which, I remember about a month ago, I had somebody reach out to me for them to come onto their show. And I had to fill out this long ass form, like everything I was going to say, specific. Okay. Yes, no lie. I still think I got it in my email, but everything I was going to say, I had to send it over to them as like a press release or whatever it's going to be. It was stupid. Jesus. Uh huh. And then when I looked the guy's show up, he wasn't even like ranked in like Apple or Spotify's um, list of top podcasters. So I'm like, this uh, makes no damn sense. I'm not about to do all this work. <laughs> yeah, that, that is doing too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I have a, a little baby questionnaire with a few questions, but it's not like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. People well, are tripping. Yeah, they really was tripping. They was on one, but I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not really for that. And I never heard from them again. So. But trying to do this like whole networking thing to work with other podcasters, it's been nice because you get to meet different people and you get to see like what they do with their show, like how you do with yours. You know, you just me and you, we just straight went for it and like I'm like, damn, this is what it's like because trying to work with other people is different. 
because you never know who's on what. So it's yeah. it's been pretty chill so far. Um, and from like with the podcasters you work with, what have you learned so far that you Ooh. can use on your show? Let me think. Maybe um, probably just something basic like, all right, let me make sure I have topics, specific topics. I mean, uh-huh. I know the name of my show is Tangents. And we do find something, and that's kind of what I want my show to be as well, right? Uh-huh. Um, I think the only downfall of that, and it's happened to me maybe a few times, and those those episodes haven't come out, and like this isn't even coherent at all. Like I don't even know, you know what I'm saying? I, this might end up being a bonus episode or something because there's there's not any type of direction, right? Like usually yeah. the people that I talk to um, will end up going down a certain path. So it's kind of nice, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and that, and like I said, that's exactly where I want my show to, what I want my show to be, because um, it is called Tangents. But ironically enough, you got to have substance, right? Uh, yes. So as long as yes. it's like free with it, but it ends up going down a certain path to substance, I, I'm very okay with that. Um, so yeah. I definitely learn yeah. to have have subject matter and segments. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, segments yeah. segments make the show a whole lot interesting, uh, more interesting, and it's fun, right? Um, so I'm uh, I'm gonna start incorporating uh, more more segments in my show. Cool, cool. Yeah, I had a mentor. She was like, "You need to get better content. You need to have like more one on one interviews with other people, and just start networking." And I'm like. But all I want to do is just talk about dumb stuff going on in my head. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's really helped because it's helped me like being able to talk more freely, um, more more direct and can't and less candidly about things that's going on to other people. And just knowing that you're a podcaster, so am I. We're all in this space and we're all trying to go grow, but we're doing it in a way to where we're trying to help each other out. Like mm-hmm. I promo on your show, you promo on mine, and then we just grow organically together. So, and that's something I did not know. I really did it. And I can't even remember when I was trying to sell my show to get onto a radio, they was like, well, you don't have uh, episodes that are more or greater than 20 minutes. I said, because I get straight to the point. I say what I need to say, get my intro, middle, outro, and that's it. I don't need no more. I don't need no pre, mid, and post. So yeah. that's my been my biggest thing is just trying to have more, uh, more content that's longer, I guess. So... No, on on God, it's um, it's tough sometimes depending on what the subject is to draw it out. So I respect you for just like, yo, this is what I need to say, and be done mm-hmm. with it. Because I can't count how many shows it's like, y'all ain't talking about shit, but like <laughs> at least half the episode, at least. But it's like an hour or something long to me. I'm like, you know, it, yo, just say what say exactly what you said. Say what you need to say and get out the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it makes no sense that we need to be having an episode that's like an hour, two hours long, and only like 20, 30 mm-hmm. minutes of it is relevant. The rest of it is y'all just bullshitting, <laughs> which I don't get it because if you got, you know, a couple other people sitting around, y'all just talking, that's fine. But if it's just two people like you and I, we're just, really just not saying much and and motherfucking time. Orgasms. You could be doing something Sweet. else. Like right. you could be writing your own script for your next episode and just keep it moving. But I guess I'm a little bit of a different worker because I got something to say. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to record it. Then I'm going to publish it. So I guess I'm just a different breed. So well, see, that's the, that's the awesome thing about podcasting is like everything is content. Somebody's going to like that though. You mm-hmm. know, even though in your head, you're like, yo, we, we wouldn't talk about shit. Somebody's going to really enjoy that. And that's, that's what I'm learning is to, maybe in some ways lower the bar on what I think is good content, right? Not to say be mediocre, right? Because you, you should never strive for mediocrity. No, but you shouldn't. What you, what you think is like, yo, nobody's going to like that. It's down here. Somebody will love it. You, you see what I'm saying? It's it's, uh-huh. it's, the, it's the oddest thing I've ever seen, you know? I mean, think, think about the biggest podcast that you probably know. Some of them, I guarantee, like, they don't have that deep of conversations. They just, you know, they just kind of shooting the shit, and it's funny. 
brother i'm just getting in just trying to find my my niche i think i found a little bit and then get my feet wet and then just keep going from there so just trying to build everything like between the youtube the instagram and twitter and then the podcast at the same time like this circle trying to make it bigger and bigger it, it's a lot of work that you got to put into it especially from the youtube standpoint because you can understand like um the tags and the right heading and the right information you put it into like i didn't know if you put certain tags and certain words that it's going to instantly shoot things over to you to where you get more views and more followers and all that i didn't know all of this stuff i really did it all right, what is that? SEO optimization? They call yeah, it. yeah. And like, what is, speaking of which, like, what's your SEO optimization? Like, how do you do yours? Um, With the episode titles? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, some a lot of times I like to put something funny, you know, make the title something funny. Like, um, for instance, one of them is called, uh, what is it? Destiny's Child, Weed and Presidents. Like, immediately you hear that, like, what the fuck? So it might make you want to click on it or there's one called um, the title of it was like, you had an STD in your throat, bro. <laughs> you know, just, you know, and I mean, man, that's what we talked about on the show. So, you know, it's just doing something like that. Or um, if you spoke about something that was a current event, you know, um, mm -hmm. you put that in there because so here, here's one thing. If you go to, you know, Google trend, so this is what somebody told me. You can just, you know, search up Google Trends and you can search what's what's trending, what's, you know, what trending Google searches it is and maybe do an episode about that um, or hell, even talk about it for a little bit on there and then put that in the title and you'll probably get more, um, you know, more clicks. I'm not necessarily recommending um, or condoning click maybe titles, you know, because there's plenty of people that do that. And then you click on it and like, okay, you didn't even talk about that. You just did it because it was something wild and it's trending. But I mean, hey, what do I know? If that's what if that's what somebody wants to do, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily going to be mad at it. But uh, I'll give you an example that um, episode 30, RIP Kevin Samuels at that time, right? Kevin Samuels just passed. That was trending. So I looked at my analytics on, on one search or um, podcast player and it said, so the, the podcast player was Google Podcast, and it'll show you like where people are finding your Boy show. Julius, um, toxic tangent. I think podcast. it was X Check amount of downloads were, were from um, searching Kevin that Samuels, in there. Pay so to the it's kind of cool the different, you know, the different features that the podcast players have. They give, they all give you different analytics, and it's kind of annoying. It'll be nice if they're all in one spot, but yeah, yeah true. SEO. Yeah, I've, I've looked at those analytics and of course, I think you've probably experienced it. Like when you post on uh, Facebook, it'd be like, oh, well, we can grow your podcast for you, blah, blah, blah. Oh. Man, all that shit is bullshit. It's just bullshit. Like I was yeah. dumb. I think when I did it, I paid like, I think $10, okay? And I'm not going to lie, I did it because I fell for a swindle. And then when I looked at the numbers, like just the numbers themselves, they really didn't match up to streams and plays right. because it's like 10 seconds, then they're gone. Like they'll mm. listen to the first 10 seconds and then they're gone. And I'm like, what the hell? What the hell just happened? So... It's like from what I found out doing more and more research, you build your following, you build your audience by doing more and more, more and more better content and doing content with other people. Because like you said, we bring our viewers in together and they swap and swap. So that's how things grow organically. Like they, you can't pay for everything. You have to really right. put in the work to do it yourself. So. Right. And I was I look at, oh no, go ahead. No, you got it. All right. Uh, I was told, yeah, that doesn't work. I even tried that too. I'm not going to lie. Cool. Got a lot of eyes on that actual post. Not too many yeah. clicks on the podcast. So, um, yeah, I learned that the hard way. But I have heard that podcast player ads work, right? Because people are already listening on there. People aren't listening to podcasts really on Facebook, or at least not very mm -hmm. much right now. So, yeah, they're about to shut that down. So yeah, I might I might do some marketing campaign to you know do a podcast player ad thing. 
Well, bro, will you do that if it's successful? Please, I'll let your boy let him know how it was. So, because I'll investigate that myself too. So, right, it's like yo, that's that's kind of how I am. I'm like, let me let me make sure it works because <laughs> it, it sucks. To, it sucks to pay for marketing that doesn't work. You like, yo, uh-huh. this is literally a waste of my money. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with marketing. There's nothing wrong with you know trying to get out there, but it's all about who you're paying and where they're at. Especially if you got these. And I can't believe I'm going to say this. If you got these bum fucks from over in India saying they're going to promote you over here in America when they don't even live here, so right? It's a little, little makes sketchy. Makes no damn sense. It yeah, it makes it really sketchy. And then even when I remember my brother, we were going over some things because he does a lot of background stuff for me. So he was like, "Well, get a website and go on Fiverr, and you can probably find someone to do that." And then I just happened to look up SEOs, and all SEOs they're from over in India. Every last one of them. There's not one American marketer for SEO here that's willing to do the work. So it's almost like. We want to outsource, but we only want to outsource here in America. Why we gotta go over to another country to do it? Yeah, it's a little. It's I'm skeptical of it for sure, but I haven't tried that, so who knows? I haven't either. I'm not going to. I just keep doing what I'm doing and just build my cult that way. Not that I'm saying it's a cult, but (laughs) (laughs) yes, my cult following. Yes. There you yes. go. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, wow, this is uh, it's been really nice. It's been really nice. Well, um, so if people want to get a hold of you, be on your podcast, come check you out. How can they find you? Uh, you can search at Toxic Tangents Pod on Instagram. Uh, just shoot me a DM, and we'll get something going. Um, and also listen to the podcast Toxic Tangents wherever you're listening to this sarcasms and orgasms and, wait wait and motherfucking orgasms my motherfucking bad. orgasms that's right that's right <laughs> <laughs> but yeah same place you search up Toxic Tangents hit that follow button on your podcast player app and yeah let's be part of community yeah let's get it definitely well thank you so much Julius for coming on being a guest i really have fun man especially when you welcome me to come on toxic tangents once again on all podcast players and even youtube bet definitely go check out the episode that i was on because we got to some really really good shit we really did (laughs) so i appreciate you coming on man and joining me and having a good conversation thank you brother i appreciate it no thank you for having me on well, definitely, you're, you are welcome. Excuse me. You are welcome back anytime. So, people, this has been another episode of Sarcasms and Motherfucking Orgasms. I am joined by my host, Julius, from Toxic Tangents. Make sure you go check him out whenever you get a chance. So, I'm Will, and I'll talk to y'all soon.